Hello everyone, I am the Biologist13 and I'm the developer of Custom Spawners for Bucket. And this is going to be a short video, or medium length video, or whatever I happen to run into, um, on how to get started using Custom Spawners and some demonstrations of the things you can do in Custom Spawners. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a basic spawner in this little test area using this block as our spawner. And custom spawners can use any block as a mob spawner for it, but obsidian stands out, so we're going to use that. So I'm just going to set the time to day real quick because it's almost sundown. Okay, so the first thing you have to do for a custom spawner's spawner is create an entity for it to spawn. So we're just going to create this and make it a basic pig spawner. So for that you do slash CSE or slash entities like that, but we're going to use CSE. Then you do create and then the mob type you want. So we're going to do pig. So it says successfully created a spawnable entity with ID 12. And normally it'll start at zero, but I have 12 other entities for the demonstrations. <laughs> so uh, this is ID 12 and it's just a basic pig right now. And to next thing we have to do is select it to see if we want any to change any properties for it. So for that you do slash CSE, then select, and then the ID number, or the name once you eventually set it. But we're going to use the ID for now, so it's set. And then you can easily do some of the commands without, or do the commands without having to define an ID on what it needs to do. So we're going to look at the info on this entity, which is CSE info. And you see there's a bunch of different properties you can set for a custom spawner's entity, including the type. You can change the type again. You can add a potion effect. You can change its velocity uh, and a bunch of others. <laughs> um, we'll, get to, we'll get through all of them. So now we're going to do, but we don't want to change any for just this basic spawner. So now to create a spawner, you look at the block that you want it to be, and you do slash CSS or slash spawners. But we're going to use CSS and then create, and then the ID number or the name of the entity that you want to use. So we just created entity 12, so we're going to use slash CSS create 12, and successfully created a pig spawner with ID 9. So we want to change a few properties of this spawner because we don't want them spawning way over here or like being like super fast spawning or we don't want 100 pigs inside of here. So we're going to look at the properties of this spawner. So for that, you do, we're going to select it first, so we don't have to type in the pesky ID number every time, which is so hard. <laughs> uh, we're just going to do slash CSS select and then 9, which is the spawner ID. So then we can see info, and we see information on spawner with ID 9. And active is whether the spawner will actually spawn or not, so it's false right now, so it's inactive. Uh, hidden hides it from users without uh, permission, and or to see it so you can hide it better in dungeons. Uh, spawn rate, 2 per 120 ticks. That means that I'll spawn 2 mobs every 6 seconds because 20 ticks is a second. Uh, spawn radius is how far away it'll look to try and spawn an entity. Maximum mobs is how many mobs that I can possibly have at once. Maximum light is maximum light level that a block, the spawner block itself or any location it tries to spawn can be in order for it to actually spawn the mob. Uh, minimum light, it's minimum light. <laughs> Maximum distance is the maximum distance any player can be from it for it to spawn. Minimum distance, minimum. Uh, redstone trigger, that's a cool one. Uh, if it's set to true, then it'll always spawn when it's both active and triggered by redstone. Uh, uses spawn area. That means you can actually set a spawn area using a wooden shovel or the item that you define and config for it. But wooden shovel is default. And you can just set the area that you want it to spawn in. Uh, that says the points that it's at. Uh, so we're only concerned for this spawner though with the uh, radius and max mobs and max light. So we're going to do slash CSS set max mobs and we're going to do 8. And then max light set max light and 15 because that's sunlight. And we're going to do uh, set radius. And I believe it's four blocks to the corner, so we're going to do four. So now we have all those sets. Now we can set it active with slash CSS set active. And since we have it selected, it'll do that. And in a few seconds, we'll start seeing some pigs spawn. Wait for it. Yeah. 
So now we have a pig spawner that we just created with a pig entity that frolics in here and they seem to be phasing through these. Oh well. <laughs> and that one escaped. Oh well. So that's how you create a basic uh, spawner for pigs, but custom spawners can do way more than just spawn pigs. So I've prepared these little demonstrations. So this first one is the Metamatic. And if you press these buttons, oops, it should spawn some stuff. Yeah, see? That one spawns chickens that are cooked meat because they're, they die of fire when you kill them. That one wasn't working for some reason. Uh, which brings up another point. Uh, Custom Spawners is still a beta plugin, version 0.0.5 beta. So there is a few bugs here and there. That is one of them, the redstone. Um, uh, anyway, so you can create meat maker things that are amazing. So that's one. Uh, the next thing is a one of the properties in custom spawners for entities is the vector, and this sets which direction you can make, or you can make things start flying in a direction once they're spawned. So in this one, I have it set so it'll spawn chickens that fly off in that direction. So, if I hit that, it's actually, yeah, if it ever bugs out like this, you can do slash CS, reload, and it reloads the spawners. Now it's working. So you see it's firing chickens into the distance, and <laughs> uh, you'll see there's a huge pile over here. <laughs> um, since I got far enough away, it stopped spawning, but now we have a bunch of chickens over here. So... That's the chicken cannon. I'll turn this off before something bad happens. <laughs> uh, anyway, this will probably work now too. Yeah. So CS reload will usually fix problems if you need to. Um, so the next thing that we're going to look at is some of the dungeon capabilities of custom spawners. Hey, chicken. Uh, so we're going to go down here where I've set up a little dungeon. Cave of Mystery. So you can go down into this dungeon, you'll see. If we go down here, we have a locked door. Well, sort of locked. Ye who enter here must find the sword of light to prevail. Thou who does not shall face a painful death. So, we don't want to die, even though we're in creative. So it's not going to matter, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go up here, and... Oh, well, this looks fine. Hmm. Oh, crap! So, <laughs> these are some buffed up zombies and skeletons which have which have resistance potion effects applied to them and are uh, I believe I applied some other effects to them to make them stronger but yeah you can see it quickly gets pretty hectic in here and it's like oh no so if you hit this switch though all epically like I just did um it will turn off these spawners which see they're not spawning anymore and it also opens that door, but we're gonna look up here first because there's treasure. Um. <laughs> anyway, uh, if we go down here, you can see we've found the Sword of Light, which is just a sharpness sword. So we're gonna go back up. So this is the Sword of Light. So we can use it to vanquish the evil doers, which reside in the boss room. So if we go in here, we open this door. The lights will turn on, and then, oops. Which this should again custom spawners is a bit glitchy right now. Yeah. Okay. There we go. So we have three iron golems, which seem to be a bit more attached to those guys now. But normally, if I wasn't creative, they'd come towards us and they'd start attacking you. So, also these guys. Even though it looks like they're taking damage, they actually will not take damage from anything but the Sword of Light. So, which is another property you can set in custom spawners. So, if I do this enough, they'll eventually die. But, even with this Diamond Sword, which is actually much more beefed up than the other one, I can whack this guy for hours and nothing will happen. This is better. <laughs> but, Sword of Light will end up actually doing damage to them. See, so that could be a potential boss room for cust in custom spawners. Next, we'll go up through the treasure room into the exit, 
and we'll just fly up here because that's easier. We'll follow the path through here, and we're back at the beginning. So the next thing I'm going to show you is, oops, some of these animals seem to have grown up. So we're going to do, so actually, I'll demonstrate another command in custom spawners. This is supposed to be a petting zoo with baby animals, <laughs> but we're, they seem to have all grown up. So we're going to first use the list all commands to see what spawners exist near us. And then we're going to use the remove mobs commands to instantly remove all these mobs. So to see all the nearby spawners do slash CSS list near and it says 8 at location and it scans 25 blocks around but that's configurable. So this is the only spawner within five or 25 blocks of us. So we're going to do slash CSS remove mobs and then we're going to do the ID which is 8 and all gone. So now Let's see. We need to see some info on it to make sure that it's still spawning. Looks like it is, or should be. So we're just going to do reload again. Yeah. Look at the cute little adorable animals! Oh, Let's go pet them and give them some wheat and stuff. Where is if I can find the wheat, because I'm still not familiar with this inventory. Oh, look at them! Oh, they're so adorable! Oh, oh. Let's pet them. Oh. <laughs> okay, freak out moment. Killed one. We need a grave. Okay, here will be the grave of Chicky McChickerson, or whatever I... But I don't even know what it was, because that's, that's how devoted I am to that chicken. Here lies Chicky the Chick. Can't spell. <laughs> rip. That's not how you spell rip at all. I'm so bad. Okay. Bye, right, Chicky the Chick. Okay, so we're almost done with custom spawners. Oh, <laughs> But you guys will probably come up with way cooler things than what I'm listing here. But here, this is the final thing. I have just an ironic little thing in here. So, Cinder Men are holding pumpkins. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So you can make Endermen holding different blocks and all sorts of other stuff in custom spawners. So, yeah. So now I'm going to go through some of these real quick and demonstrate uh, how some of these are done. Why are you all gathering around your grave? You're grave stomping it. What the heck, man? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll just briefly explain how some of these work first. Um, so this metamatic, what it is, is I have spawners under here, which are these obsidian blocks, and they are redstone triggered spawners which spawn flaming animals with very low health, so when you hit one of these, it will spawn them in the, their spawn area, which is this area, and set them on fire, which will pretty much kill them instantly. And then you can go in there and pick up the cooked meat. Uh, for the chicken cannon... I have another spawner block hidden here, also triggered by redstone. And that spawns chickens with a vector that sets them going this way. And basically just launches them in this direction. Oh, there's a lot over there. Um, and I also have them set so they're very low health, so I can just go over here and whack the crap out of them when I'm done. Like so. And then, if we go into the dungeon... I was a pro. No, I wasn't pro. Um, anyway, uh, so if we go in here, these are basically just redstone activated spawners, which spawn beefed up uh, entities with like potion effects and stuff like that. And they're a bit faster than the defaults, so you can quickly get swarmed here. Uh, that's nothing special down there. Uh, the boss battle is uh, 
Redstone Creepers. Uh, this is the spawner block, and it's also Redstone triggered from the lever out here. And I have it set using one of the features uh, in custom spawners, which is damage blacklisting and whitelisting, which allows you to set uh, what types of damage the entities you have can uh, take. So for these iron golems, I have them on a whitelist, which means they will only take damage from the items that you specify. So I have them set so they only take damage from... Da well, I've really messed up the camera there. Uh, uh, they only take damage from ID or data ID 273, which is a gold sword. So that's why they weren't dying from my diamond sword. Uh, uh, then if we go up through here... Uh, the petting zoo is just a spawner with using another feature of custom spawners that allows you to have multiple different entities attached to one spawner. So I have the pigs, the cows, and the chickens all attached to a single spawner block, which allows me to just easily toggle all them. And I have them all set to be babies with only one heart of health. Uh, and over here I have an enderman spawner, which is that diamond block. And just once a player gets within eight blocks, it starts spawning uh, Endermen holding either pumpkins or jack o' lanterns, uh, which is actually two separate entities. Uh, so, yeah, that is custom spawners in a nutshell. And I will probably be making more videos on it, probably with a higher quality than this one because I've never made a video before in my life. So, uh, uh, yeah, and they'll have upcoming features in my plugins or just general random crap that I come up with or something. So this is the Biologist 13 signing off. Bye.